With the disconnected systems they are using today, quality planners face challenges. Staying in sync with the products and processes they are creating quality plans for, and reacting to product changes. And those using Excel face additional challenges, avoiding duplicate work by leveraging reusable content, maintaining a consistent approach to the styling, structure and format of their plans, and quickly reformatting plans when new and updated content needs to be incorporated. Aris Quality Planning takes a new approach by being fully integrated with PLM, which can reduce risk, simplify quality process compliance, reduce costs, and improve productivity. Welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Richard and I am the product manager for the quality planning solution that I'm going to be describing to you so I am showing you now the main user interface. We have our table of contents on the left. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the version 11 interface, this is it. We've added a quality management talk element on the left here. And within it, we have uh, both design quality documents and process quality documents. These are uh, uh, quality document frameworks uh, or data models that have been uh, created and will be delivered with the product. And as, as I'll show you, there are many ways to customize this if you need to. All right, so let's look at a one of these documents. And let me go over br briefly the elements of the updated UI. Again, if, you, if you're familiar with our previous product or even previous versions of Innovator, you'll notice some changes. One of them is we've added this sidebar here to the left that it has icons or controls, if you will, to access purpose-built editors. In this case, we have uh, a tabular view that is, is built for quality document data in particular. You also have the ability to access all the item type properties as you have in, in a typical form. And if there were relationships uh, tabs, you would see that on this view as well. So let me get back to the editor. So. I'm displaying here a design FMEA, and those of you familiar with that view, this tabular view to the right should look familiar. In this case, we've got two header levels with uh, various categories of information, but we've also added this tree to the left. I mentioned previously that the data model, the underlying data model that makes up these quality documents is hierarchical. So for example, in this case, I've identified a particular component. I call a radio interface. This particular component has a function. This is, this is the function it performs. Uh, associated with this function, these are the various ways that, that this component could fail to meet this function. So items have functions, have failure modes, have various effects, and so on and so forth. You can see as I describe this view that any time I click on any one of these cells, the corresponding document element in the tree is scrolled and highlighted. So the two views are, uh, in, in, are kept in sync with one another. So in addition to showing data hierarchy, the tree provides a convenient navigation mechanism to uh, be able to access information within these documents quickly. So uh, I have, I'm showing here a fairly small document. Uh, these types of uh, documents can get quite large. I have um, a fairly complete example here. The process an author would use to fill in this information to create these documents it has also been modified from our previous product uh, and is a little bit different than if you're using a product like Excel. So anything that is done to a document for adding information or removing information and whatnot is done through an explicit function. So for example, if I wanted to add an item to this document, I have context sensitive menus that I pull up to add specific document elements. So in this case, if I insert an item, I'm presented uh, with a uh, context menu, I select the context menu item for creating a new item in this case, 
and I have a pop-up editor, which is shown directly in the vicinity of the cell, for me to enter that information. And as soon as I accept it, a new document is added, new document element is added, and the tree is updated. And so on and so forth. If I want to add a new function, a similar type of interface is provided, and so and right down the line. There are different types of editors for this information. So I have shown you text-based editors. If I want to access information that is coming from a catalog or it's coming from a list, I can do that as well. So for example, here I have a, a list of choices that has been configured for this particular type of document. This list of information is part of the configuration process. You can design it per the needs of your organization. I also have static lists where uh, I have specific values and descriptions of those values that I want to uh, show to the author. For example, a severity ranking list, uh, and so on and so forth. And this new editing paradigm is meant to address that ease of use uh, and making the generation of this content more explicit to the author. Okay. The ability to create information in these documents and reference business objects uh, outside of the quality domain or outside of the, the objects that make up this particular document. And one way of illustrating that is when I configured this particular data model, I created uh, separate item types for prevention control. And I assigned uh, that reference within the data model for this document such that when I want to create a new prevention control and add it to this document, I now have a choice. I can either enter uh, the text directly into this document and therefore it doesn't reference anything externally, or I can select or create a prevention control item that I've configured. In this case, I have specific uh, prevention control items that have a more comprehensive definition of what a prevention control is. I can assign various documents to those. I can have additional metadata or properties associated with that. And I can organize that information as a catalog of uh, independently accessible and reusable components for my quality documents. So when I added this prevention control to the document, you can see uh, I didn't type any text. The text shows up by way of me referencing that particular item type. And we have a little indicator here that is a visual indication to the author that this, the information in this cell is created and is in reference to an external object or an object that you're using Innovator to manage. In this case, again, it's a prevention control. So, the fact that that indicator is blue tells me that this document, at least the contents of this cell, is in sync with the reference business object. We know that catalogs of information or uh, external business objects can evolve independently of these quality documents. And when they do, we need some mechanism to ensure that as this data, as your parts, as your processes, uh, manufacturing processes or tools or whatever, in this case prevention controls, when they evolve, when they change, I need some indication to know what quality documents are affected and how are they affected. So this little indicator in the cell tells the author that, as for now, this information is in sync with that uh, referenced object. So let's say, for example, I I open that reference object, and uh, I lock it, and I change it. I know as part of this configuration, I am referring to this particular property in the document, so I'll just uh, make any change here. I will save it. And the nature of this uh, relationship is floating, so as soon as this change is made, and I come in and refresh my document, I can see that there's a little yellow indicator here. That tells me that this information is now out of sync with what it has been referencing. Okay? Uh, and my way of bringing that back into compliance 
is to either ignore it if I don't care about it or update the document. In this case, my cell has been updated. Okay, let's see what else. So that's the general process of adding information to these documents. Again, it's an explicit function that um, is provided to the user. These context menus, the, the kinds of information that you can add to these documents are all dependent on the underlying data model, which you are free to modify or configure based on uh, your company's policies or needs. As I mentioned, we have a, an out-of-the-box configuration that will deliver with the product, which is based, again, uh, mainly on the AIAG reference standards. So here is a design FMEA. Uh, it's one particular document. It's, uh, it's very similar in content, at least, to what we had in our previous product. Uh, one more thing about design FMEAs. You have the ability to configure various algorithms for computing content, all right? So if you're familiar with FMEAs, for example, your RPN or your risk priority number is a product of your detection ranking associated with a detection control, uh, its associated cause. Again, you need to refer up the hierarchy to see what relates to what. And the effect with the highest severity. So. 10 times 7 times 5 gives you an RPN value of 350. We have various styling that we apply to these values that identify the values that are being used to calculate the RPN. So for example, if I were to add another detection, and um, let me save it here. Uh, with a lower value, David. Sorry, that RPN has been recalculated with a new value. All right, so that's the design FMEA. Let me show you the process side. Uh, this is a process quality document, and process quality documents have a, a number of different views. Uh, you have the process control plan, very similar layout, by the way. You have access to the process quality document prior, uh, properties, and you have access to the purpose-built editor. Again, same as was used on the design side. Process control plan has identifies the operations, uh, its corresponding tools, and for this particular document, I don't have any. Uh, both product and process characteristics about uh, that, that uh, relate to a particular operation, uh, evaluation or measurement techniques uh, and control methods. The process flow diagram, similar information, but it focuses only on the operations, uh, its particular function, and characteristics. Uh, and then finally, the process FMEA, which is similar to the uh, design FMEA, uh, but it focuses on operations and looking at how uh, these operations can fail in one way or another. Same, otherwise similar type of information. Any content that is displayed in these views is all uh, specific to the document. It's all contained within the document. So if I add an operation here, I have to lock it. If I add an operation here, um, say, and I were to go to different view, you can see that operation is there as well. It's the same data, it's just these views are basically filtering uh, all but the necessary document elements and their properties that should be shown, okay? So back to the control plan, again, a very similar layout, a very similar editing paradigm where I can either work directly in the tree by clicking or I can navigate using the arrow keys and access various key configurations to enter the data directly there. Uh, we know from past customers that um, the ability to enter this information as quickly and efficiently as possible is, uh, is important because, again, some of these documents get quite large. 